Hello and welcome to Lazarski podcast number three. I am your host, Dipan Shulakwan, and I'm a lecturer in faculty of economics and management. I teach finances. Through this podcast, my goal is to disseminate meaningful conversations with our esteemed guests as they share their industry secrets with us. Today, on the podcast, we have a very special guest, Mr. Daniel Witkowski. He was born in Sweden, raised in US, worked there, and he also received his personal training in uh, Los Angeles Film School from 2009 to 2010 and New York Film Academy from 2011 to 2014. And he worked as an OPT in US for one year and since 2015 he has been wake making waves in Poland. Currently he's serving as the director of uh, Studio of Lazarski University. So please welcome Mr. Daniel. Daniel, how are you today? Thank you. I'm good. I'm feeling very relaxed, very happy. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I tried my best. I hope I will be able to live up to the statements that you've made, but we'll see. All right. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, do you would would you like to jump directly to the questions? Sure. You're the moderator. You decide right. where we go. So uh, you <coughs> worked in U.S., right? So yes. let me let me hit you with the most difficult question here. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to come back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This this question. Um, still haunts me to this day well it haunts me too all right um why did i decide to go back um yeah. well as we all know i lived in la as 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 you introduced la is the mecca of filmmaking that is where netflix has its offices paramount universal studios warner brothers uh, a24 etc a lot of big companies uh, to be honest there are two reasons why I decided that I must come back. One of them is personal, <laughs> of which simply I don't want to disclose. Okay. Because it's personal. Keep your secrets. Right. Uh, it was a family emergency, in short, mm -hmm. family issue, something like that. Um, but also, it's kind of 50 50 with the family thing. Um, I wasn't feeling at home in LA. It felt very. Uh, simply speaking, superficial. People were not nice to each other because they wanted to genuinely be nice to each other. Okay. It felt like people were just fake, fake, fake nice to each other. So and what we hear about LA is, is more true well, than not. It is all glamour, it is all stars, but that's, that's the marketing ploy. That's what they sell you on. Um, there is a lot of homeless people in LA. There is a lot of crazy people in LA. You mean aspiring actors? Well, <laughs> those are waiters. Okay. <laughs> those are waiters. All There's right. a lot of waiters who are uh, just waiting to are, get casted. Well, you know, they're, they're serving tables and they're hoping that Brad Pitt will be at the one of the tables that they can mm -hmm. serve so that they can quickly give him, you know, their resume, right? Their photos. Um, it's nothing against in, in nothing against aspiring actors, uh, but there is a lot of them. It is the tinsel town. It is the place where you go to become famous. Okay. Maybe not necessarily rich, but definitely famous. And uh, if people aspire to be famous, well, they tend to sacrifice a lot of their personal values um, to become famous, to become liked. Uh, I feel that I wasn't able to do that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking for fame. I wanted to just make good movies. I wanted to continue crafting good stories. And maybe I could have done it if I would have tried harder yeah. in terms of getting into these networking events and trying to get to know people. But uh, strictly speaking, the whole mix with the family issue as well, um, it just didn't work okay. out. Sounds like a good way. enough reason to me because yeah. also I have, a <clears throat> I have a very personal opinion about the networking events. Yeah. Uh, talking about LA, it must be on um, steroids when it comes to <laughs> being fake. Uh, whenever we have, let's say, this uh, business networking events and stuff, yep. there, is, there is a sort of a mask that you have to put on yourself yes. and be super nice to people yeah. uh, where are you from and being curious about them when you are not seriously interested in them yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I must um, I'm assuming that was uh, similar the case with when you would be meeting directors or potential clients and of course and sometimes it just gets too much to be nice to the people you yep. can't even s stand, stand it's, it's, it all depends on what you want right I mean mm -hmm. I remember I've been to a few networking events here in Warsaw 
startup, usually they're startup, or they were, I don't go to those anymore, but startup uh, networking events. Yeah. And I remember that a lot of those people, it was the same. It was very similar, just the theme was different. It wasn't actors and movies, it was, you know, I've started 10 startups. I'm like, yeah. that's great, how many succeeded? Well, <laughs> right. we're working on that. <laughs> right, exactly, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's true. You gotta put on a mask, you gotta put on a face. Yeah, I mean, you gotta find out what what the capital wants, right? Mm -hmm. If you want if you want to be part of something big, then you know the whole word word fake it till you make it. Yeah. But then, you know, once you fake it till you make it, you might not be who you started out as because you faked it so much you don't know who you are anymore. That's a very interesting point to raise. It's like <coughs> fake it till you make it. Yeah. Uh, there is no doubt about that. It definitely helps you to reach your goal. But you are saying that you might not wanted to be that person in the first place because you're becoming the fake person that you're fake till now but yes. that's not the real you yeah and a part of it i'm assuming uh how old were you when you just came back to poland i was 25 rather young 2015 yes, yes so it was uh it was quite early that you realize what's right for you and what's not i think 25 mm, yes. is the age where usually people start to get in their careers uh, especially True. for the people who are watching who are younger, uh, who are 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, there are certain. <laughs> so <laughs> these people, uh, they think like their, their, their troubles, their worries, they, they must bother them so much. But I believe that life doesn't even actually start until your late 20s. At least 30, I would. I mean, some people, I think it depends on the approach that you have. Some people say that life doesn't start until you turn 50. Okay. It's yeah, those are those are people who are 50, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or those people who are in their 80s and they're like, okay, yeah. well, life is not going to yeah. start now, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, I think you're right. I think that a lot of young people, you know, in their 20s or early 20s, they're like, oh my God, you know, I've... I've I've failed, I failed at something or yes. I haven't accomplished something. And yeah, the, the whole failure thing was also a big thing. Uh, after all, um, I mean, you know, I had the opportunity of a lifetime, right, to study and live and work mm -hmm. in LA and become mm -hmm. famous and uh, the whole America thing, right? Yeah, Cause the American who dream. the hell would come back to Poland, right? Eight years ago, well, almost nine years ago, Poland was developing, wasn't as developed as, as it is now, but you could still see a lot of the Perel, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the, the new roads were starting to get built, the, the high, the skyscrapers that you see on Rondo Tashinskiego, they don't, I don't think they existed back then, you know, it was completely different. So, you know, going back to a post-communist country, from a strictly capitalist country, it's like, what's wrong That's with you? That's like the epitome of, of capitalism today. Yes. That's the best. Yes. I yes. mean, better than that, where, where would you go? Maybe right. Shanghai, but you won't last there for like a lot of time. But yeah, <laughs> but I think also Shanghai now, th th that kind of grown, has grown for the past five years, something like that, right? Because yeah. even 10 years ago, it wasn't really like China yeah. or Singapore or, or Indonesia weren't really those destinations where you would think mm -hmm. that you'd go, but yeah. So, uh, continuing to that thing, uh, when you were working in uh, US, mm -hmm. I did you uh, um, tell me more about any any um, any film experience or any experience that you had behind the cameras that <coughs> uh, that was extraordinary? You know, that was that just sticks in your mind that wow, I would like to share the story one day, and then today is the day that you just let it out. Uh, I guess I could I could start. I'll, st I'll start, what's, what story? The, the first story that comes to mind is an interesting, it's a funny one, it's not really interesting, it just kind of shows a person's ego. Mm -hmm. I'll start with it, it's not the most exciting story, but um, I was part of a horror movie, low budget indie horror movie, um, which we were filming in LA during my OPT. Okay. And uh, the actress who was playing the ghost, of the horror movie because it was a typical Ouija board, the teenagers dying in the forest kind of thing, nothing special. But, you know, it was a fun experience. Uh, she absolutely hated her makeup artist okay. because she considered, she, she 
her, her makeup artist was drawing like lines to get to make her look like a ghost. Wasn't that the As, purpose? Right, it wasn't really that serious, but she flipped out one day and almost destroyed the whole set and ran off. She, and she the director, the, not the makeup artist, but the and actress, the director was like, cut, cut, we got the scene. Yeah, we got it, <laughs> <laughs> we got it, the ghost went crazy. <laughs> the ghost went crazy. That's what I wanted as a natural actor, um, yeah. But uh, honestly, I think it's, um, I've worked with a few famous people, I mean half famous, I don't know if these people, the youngsters will know these, but remember the old movie Predator with yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Um, there is an actor in there called Bill, Bill Duke. He was the guy, he was the black guy with the big machine gun, with the minigun. Okay. And uh, he is very famous in those circles with Schwarzenegger and Stallone, but in LA only. Like Schwarzenegger and Stallone or international, he is very famous in LA. Okay, he's like the Stallone of LA. Something like that, right. Okay, but okay. still everyone knows Stallone, everyone knows Schwarzenegger, but um, but he was famous and he was making a documentary. And I remember I worked with him, the guy was like two meters, 20 centimeters, tall is very tall. I can't okay. specify how tall um, in, in description, but um, it was very interesting to work with him because he was extremely chill. A and lot tall. of uh, chill and tall, right? Agreed. <laughs> Especially tall. But he was very chill. He had a very like, very like, ah, if something doesn't work out, too bad. It, is, it, did, it doesn't work out. Com as compared to a lot of young filmmakers, 20, 30, 40, no, but 20, 30, are very like anal retentive, very strict. Everything has to be perfect. It, you know, kind of the approach of Kubrick, but not having the reputation of Kubrick. Okay, Stanley uh, Kubrick. Ah, oh, all right, Stanley. Kubrick. I know you might okay. not know these names, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was interesting to work with him. But he was um, he was a filmmaker. Or he was he was an actor. Uh, Bill Duke was a producer. Okay, he Bill was a, he started off as an actor in the seventies and eighties, uh, but then he started uh, producing a lot of I think it was TV shows. Yeah. Uh, and when I was working with him, I was working with him as a. A DP, so director of photography, mm -hmm. uh, on a documentary about um, the documentary was called Black Girls, I think it was, and it was about uh, the mistreatment of black girls in in general, I think, or in the industry of film. I don't remember exactly what it was, okay. but it was it was a documentary about the hardships of, of black girls. Okay, so is it related with your? Uh um, with, with your project that actually won an award called uh, Heart of Hate. Is it the same thing we are talking about or uh, is it a different thing, the Heart of Hate? Well, uh, we can, if you want to go into Heart of Hate. Um, yes. Heart of Hate was, I don't remember if Heart of Hate won anything. I think the other movie that I made uh, won Solitaire. something. Yes, okay, uh, okay. I think so. I, I don't remember. This was more than 10 years ago. Wow, so my right. memory is not the way it used to be. But... Um, Heart of Hate, um, if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you watch it. It's on Vimeo. I believe it is available for everyone. I assume yeah. you've seen it. Yeah. Good. Or not. <laughs> <coughs> Depends. <laughs> but um, I don't remember how I came to the story, but the story is simply about a neo-Nazi who falls in love with an Arab girl or a girl of different ethnicity, not white. Uh, and he fights his brother, who's the leader of the neo-Nazi group that he uh, is part of. So you know, there's there's conflict. I think, I think it was a very good starting project because they always kept teaching us that in movies it's all about conflict. If the stakes are too low, like you know, a kid wants a, poly a lollipop versus a kid needs to save his drowning dog, mm -hmm. the stakes are completely different. And they always kept telling us that the higher the stakes, the more interesting it will be for the audience to watch the story and the conflict unfold. Whether, you know, everyone saves, you know, the guy saves the girl, wins the money, beats the bad guy or not. Um, so I thought that, you know, especially, uh, especially with, with times that we live in, uh, mm. I felt that that was an appropriate question to ask. Also, if you watch the movie, you will understand why he got interested in something that the girl was offering. In short, it was knowledge, but you know, there is a visualization too. As well. So, so uh, when you describe it, I think I watched the Solitaire, not the Heart of Hate. Yes, so yeah. Solitaire was yeah. my first movie, 2009. 
like 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, that was in uh, in LA film mm. school, and um, that was more of my let's call it Fincher uh, era, where I watched Fight Club and I wanted to do something about the psychology um, about uh, the psychology of someone committing a crime and then dealing with that crime as f you know freshly as uh, freshly after he had committed it. It, it shows a very real aspect, although it's a very, very, f very much of a fiction fiction thing. Yes. Uh, but it shows a very real aspect of the people who are actually suffering from mental health issue like uh, schizophrenia, True. and it might not seem well on the screen. It's very entertaining for us to watch, but like right. legit, uh, there are problems with the people. And and I I was researching um, about brain because mm -hmm. like, you know brain is a fascinating thing absolutely yeah some people lack it but again <laughs> the well there, there, there is this thing yeah. about the brain and so yeah. uh, there are a lot of criminals serial killers right True. and uh, there is a very psychological uh, not there is not just a psychological aspect of them killing people because they want to uh, for example rapes they they are not more about the physical they're more about the power sense yep. and uh, it was a discovery that after 80,000 brain scans it was found that the physiology of the brain is actually disturbed mm -hmm. uh, of these criminals and there was this guy I'm, I'm just about to share a very horrible story and there was this young guy who was 13 and he took the rifle and he shot both his parents and then he mm -hmm. took the gun he went to the school and he sh killed 25 uh, small kids. Mm -hmm. Turns out when they scanned his brain, it was s severely dismantled. Mm -hmm. Like it was not in the best shapes. It wasn't even looking like a brain. Mm -hmm. And so it gives us a more, uh, I wouldn't say empathetic approach to things, but it's not always about, some things are not in control of the people, you know. Agreed. And not that they should be uh, like, it's more about being pre uh, uh, proactive the, rather than to be reactive yeah the solution could be offered like people can be get getting brain scan and these type of potential things might, might uh, be eradicated before these things happen right so we just again we took a tangent over there we did we did but yeah. I mean it's an interesting tangent but yeah. uh, I don't feel competent enough to be able to say I have my opinion yeah uh, about it and my opinion is I mean, it would be best if we did go the proactive way, prevent it before it happens, not think about what we can do after it has happened. Yes. Um, but, you know, it goes into yeah. also gun control, it goes into, you know, how would you recognize something like this? Like, mm -hmm. what did he do the day before? Did he eat a different breakfast? Mm -hmm. Was he, I don't know, slapped by his mom, yeah. you know, which yeah. triggered the yeah, exactly. to go? So Th there could be so many facts. We cannot exactly. absolutely contain it. But say it's something can be done because like uh, things are getting better, you know, in terms of technology, well, yes, health definitely. and everything. So Availability then, you know. to technology. But exactly. uh, if we want to go deeper into that, just one step deeper. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, uh, well, if you're talking mental health issues, we are talking, we're talking personal sub personal consciousness if you feel like there's something wrong with you will you go to the doctor and check yourself out right yeah. i mean how many people oh, i hurt my lee, knee oh, it's been hurting for a week ah it's gonna go away yeah and then you find out that your knees actually cracked on the inside and because you didn't go you know it got three worse. four days exactly it got worse and then suddenly you find out that it's amputation i don't think that would be mm -hmm. that extreme but you know what i mean yeah? yes 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 I, I, get, I get it that's also goes into the education system where you have to learn how to take care of yourself but it's i think it's much more about consciousness about right. you understanding yourself yeah but also there is there tangent, is, yeah. exactly. There is also a stigma about going to a psychiatrist. It's like nobody wants to be treated as like mentally ill. Like that's why some See, people. But I think that it's changing a lot. And I actually had a discussion with our um, editor last week or two weeks ago. Can't remember. Yeah. Um, about which is interesting for you ladies out there. About what is the preference that a lady has? Uh, I guess a young one when it comes to how her man should be okay and if she finds out that he is going to a psychotherapist she's actually supposedly more drawn to him because i don't understand the reason i guess it shows that he's more strong because he can admit to the fact that he thinks there's something wrong with him so he tries to fix it okay um yeah so that was an interesting or, or is, is, interesting is it is it, uh, is it based on uh 
the thing that there's a, there is a research about the men who go to therapy are more attractive to women. Is yes. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be that. It could be yeah. that. I don't. I can't recall exactly what it was because we talked about it like a few weeks ago. Good. Uh, but it was something that was very interesting to me because you know, back in my day when I was younger, it was usually either he's rich or he's famous, and that's pretty much it. Like he can't. I don't know. Maybe you know he can yeah. raise my kids or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So like those men are stronger in a way. Well, yeah. Uh, if this is the case, I guess, then I would cancel know, my gym membership and I should go. <laughs> right. Instead of instead of going, to the, instead of going to the gym, you should go start to seeing a therapist. a therapist, right? If if you want to attract one more more girls, that's one mating strategy right there. Uh, from the research, I guess it is. You Love know, it. <laughs> Love it. I I I numbers don't lie, Daniel. So yeah, statistics, definitely. Statistics don't lie. I would uh, I would definitely argue. Yep. It all depends on the statistic pool and sure. uh, and which statistics you have drawn out of the research, right? Mm -hmm. Because technically we have statistically uh, proven, which yeah. we can never do, uh, well that autism is caused by vaccines. I don't want to get into that because that's a difficult topic. Yeah, but you see we, could, we could talk about it right. quite yeah. a lot. Statistics, lot of statistics let's, are let's go very to the numbers. Yeah. Also, it's a very interesting thing about uh, people going to therapist therapy these days. Mm -hmm. It's more, mm, it's it's become more available. Yes, because uh, a lot more psychology graduate students. Yeah, True. Well, True. And uh, more affordable, of course. Mm. And Absolutely. also people are becoming more aware because of this introduction of uh, digitalization because we are receiving way more information than we used to. Yep. And it opens aspects about our personality that we weren't aware of. And True. maybe there is something, a root cause of our problem which could be solved by therapy. And, and from the feedback that I hear from uh, people going to good therapists, not like the therapists which blame everything on trauma response, Oh, you're breathing wrong because you know you have a childhood trauma. Yeah. That's the easiest way you could always put this because these are not very science-based ba ba well, things. Well, you know, it's it's how do you prove it? Yeah, exactly. You cannot really. It's it's like the existence of God. You know, you can yeah. just like <laughs> you want to go uh, that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so things like I that, agree, and I also uh, yeah, and <coughs> staying in touch of uh, staying in touch with your emotions. Like, it, have you heard about Robert Green? Robert Green. Uh, not not robot green, R Robert Green. There Robert is Green. No. Robert Green. No, okay, no. he's uh, for for uh, for the people watching. Uh, Robert Green is uh, well, he's uh, he's an amazing writer, five times bestseller of uh, books, and he has mastery and laws of forty eight laws of power. Maybe have you heard about this book? No. It's really 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 good books. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll just uh, show you some I'll of them. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, and he basically says that uh, people tend to suppress emotions like. Some uh, somebody told something to you in your workspace, and you just uh, you just took it in, and you think that you know I I I solved it. No, yeah. you just you just took it. Yes. It's very normal to feel anger, not to lash out like 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 a dog. Like right? some people do. Yes, but it's very important to let those feelings of anger, resentment, uh, things like that how, uh, that out. Yes. People are also very afraid of showing that they are too happy, or that they just sometimes stop to laugh. Obviously, not in very professional conditions, but. Expressing emotions is is it's what really? gives yes mm -hmm. uh, like it what gives your creativity its fuel. Yeah. Without emotions, if you just keep on suppressing them, one day you're just going to burst it out like a dam. Yes, like, you know. exactly. And uh, creativity is driven by emotions. A person who's dead inside True. cannot technically be creative. Yes, you can crunch numbers on Excel, but when you but want to that's create something, really creative. Yeah, well, that's you can be creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you cannot be creative uh, when you're dead inside, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> simply speaking. Simply, right? yeah, simply put. So yes, yeah. uh, you need to be in touch with your emotions. And one of the best ways and the healthiest ways is to go to therapy, get in touch. I agree. I think, I, th I mean, that's the thing. Or, the, that's or the be thing. a man. Just <laughs> be a man. <laughs> keep be a that man, in just keep it in. I am fine. I yeah, feel good. Fine. Don't yeah, well, talk like, to more me. More pain, more gain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So no, I think I think you're right that um, it is a good thing that people have realized that going to therapy is is an answer. I mean, it's it's a matter of. See, this, I think that this is kind of approaching the other side, right? Yeah. If you break a nail, you want to go to therapy and talk about how you broke your nail and you can't wow. handle it. See. I mean, everything in life, at least this is what I believe in, what I have learned works the best until I guess I will learn something new. Yeah. Balance. You can't be too soft, but you can't be too hard. Right. Right? It has to be 
a little bit of you can't take everything personally <laughs> <laughs> but also you cannot um, be completely 100% expressive For right sure. uh, it was interesting what you said that that some people are afraid to show happiness I haven't yeah. heard this I can understand why um, but based more on the side of anger mm-hmm. um, if you're showing anger then it kind of shows that you are pushing people away right yeah. so I guess if you're showing happiness I don't know maybe you're afraid to attract the wrong people I, I, it's social it's, it's media very much I've a case it's it very much a case you, you just you know there is this trend going on among seeming cool by logging on her yes you know? absolutely it's like yeah not the greatest thing of obviously like you're going to attract the type of energy you're going to put out. Yeah, yeah. So let's say you are naturally a person who uh, who's expressive. You know, yes. there are introverts, there are extroverts, Absolutely. there are ambiverts. An introvert might not be a very expressive, and the type of energy he puts out in the world, only that type of people would like to you know interact yes. with him, and he's going to attract right people for himself. Yes. If he chooses to act as an extrovert just to be cool. It's the same thing that you said about fake it till you make it. He might fake it to be an extrovert sure, and sure. he might welcome those people in his life that are... That don't work for him. Exactly. That for the moment, it. he could be cool hanging out with them. But like later on in life, the same thing that he attracted will start mm-hmm. to bother him. Same case, case w- goes with your uh, romantic relationships. Uh, d- agreed. Exactly. You, you, could, you could act all... Colorful, cool macho, does wow, that another? Yeah, you you, get the you initially, yeah, and exactly. You, you and you find out that it's just an empty. The moment empty you show relation. your true face, uh, either she will be not attracted to you, yeah. or, or you will just be killing yourself every day. So I think, I think, uh, I think it comes down to once again the whole balance thing, where how much of your own personal values, let's call them, or core values, are you willing to sacrifice to be liked and yeah. to fit in? Because we are social animals. I, uh, when I was in high school, uh, I had psychology and my teacher kept reminding us, kept telling us that we are social animals. Yes. And we sometimes will, uh, oftentimes, will sacrifice the better of ourselves so that we can fit into the group, right? Yes. And this is where the whole idea comes in because I, th- I think, I'm not a psychologist, but from my experience, a lot of young people, they want to fit in. It's completely understandable, right? Especially when you go to university and you don't have any friends because you left all your friends Mm -hmm. in high school, uh, you know, they all moved away. Um, And then you move into this new place, the new, the new way of doing things, right? High school, university is, is, should be a step higher, should be more requiring of you, but also on the social scene, right? Um... And the whole relationship, of course, romantic uh, r- romantic partners also come into play because well, we are human beings, right? We need to feel wanted, we need to feel loved, we need to feel liked. But that's also the other side of it is that if you push that too much, yes. then eventually, uh, well, you might not be happy with where you are because yeah. you don't feel that this is who you are. Yes. And um, either extreme is bad, you know, if you express too much, you might, uh, you run into a chance of uh, intimidating other person with your feelings, your overwhelming attention, and it's not in their control. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it applies to you as well. If you come across someone who you kind of like and, uh, yeah, well, they are way too much, way too soon. Yeah. This might intimidate you. It's a very normal human reaction. On the other hand, if you give too less, just because you want to hold back and things like yes. that, that might not work out because maybe that doesn't even cross the minimum threshold of that person to yes. be engaged with you in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there is always a balance, and balance, living in the balance, is the key to a good life. Because, but it's hard. It's extremely hard because the pendulum constantly keeps swinging. If it was sometimes it there are l- things in life that happen that completely swing you to the opposite. Yeah. And you're a complete don't touch me don't talk to me and sometimes the pendulum swings completely exactly. like oh my god i hate my values i hate myself just love me be mm-hmm. you know be my friends yeah and and sometimes it's that at that perfect balance of i'm okay where i am i'm happy with who i am with what i represent as myself um and we'll see what life brings tomorrow exactly. what life brings in a, in a year exactly and, and that's and i would like to add on the thing you said that the balance is like uh you said it's hard to create that balance. Yeah. 
if it was that easy, we would see a lot more happy faces we than would. than we, we than we see right now. And balance in case of and what we the balance could be in the case of your finances, your yeah. health, your mm -hmm. spirituality, your social circle, the way you feel about yourself, your self esteem. You know, like all of these sectors, you need to pay individual attention. Even one of them is hurting. Yeah. It's like it's like the body part. If your leg is hurting, but everything else is healthy, your attention would be continuously yes. going to the leg. Or yes. if your teeth is hurting, yeah. I mean, you overall your breathing, your your system works fine. But that's right. something. So you need to fix the aspects of your life which might uh, be lagging behind. True. Could be spiritual. Could be social. Like you might have a lot of money. That's the reason why a lot of people. You must have heard about this. That a lot of rich people are miserable. I've heard this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because they have the finances covered, you know, yeah. and when you have your finances covered, it it sort of helps you to lose the drive of it, it lacks the purpose, and that's the reason why purpose is important than finances. And the people who even achieve it, do you know, Daniel, how stars mm -hmm. die? How stars die? Usually well, first they grow really big, and then they implode into a small dwarf from uh, and they the die astronomy. from a, and they die from a drug overdose. Okay, you're talking about <laughs> those kind of stars. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. Lindsay so Lohan and uh, mm -hmm. Ezra Miller. I had, they haven't died, but, you know, they were definitely on mm -hmm. the right track. Right, so uh, <coughs> I, could, I could definitely work on the delivery of my jokes. Like, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's, I don't I but again, didn't understand what you meant by it's stars. It's so <laughs> yeah, yeah, first it's, thing it's popped the same. to my was, mind was... Uh, that's, uh, that's what made it. It was the same thing as like, there would be some people who would well, laugh on this. Well, they grow up, right? Yeah. As, as a they star, up, they go and big they and then eventually they just implode because yeah. I guess they become too big for their own good. Uh, that is true. And they kind of, I'm not really sure if they lose the sense of purpose. Have you ever met any celebrity, like A-lister celebrity, where you just... Uh, well, personally, just like, no. I've seen them on the red carpet because I used to live uh, right outside the Cinerama. Those people that know what the Cinerama, Cinerama is, it's, I, th I believe it is, well, there's Cinerama, then there's the Kodak Theater, and then there's the Chinese Theater, which is the most famous one. That's where all of the big Hollywood, uh, that's where the Oscars are, I believe. That's where the- Chinese the, Theater. It's like Chinese owned theater. by Chinese people? Uh, <laughs> it's a very good question why it's called the Chinese Theater. I never really um, looked into it. I assume because it was built in the style, the architecture looked Chinese. I Some dragons and stuff. Yes, exactly. There are these kind of, and the, and the, the, the housing, like the, the roofs are like when you think okay, of a Chinese roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think right, of right. The, the Chinese architecture. Okay, okay. I, but otherwise, I don't know why it's called the Chinese Probably theater. I would, assume it's probably going to disappear very quickly. Or not, depending on who will rule the world in the next five, ten years. I mean, I, I know the, the quality of the yeah. materials made in China is questionable, but I well, hope it doesn't disappear. Well, of course it's questionable. <laughs> so is <laughs> that the reason of cheap. you saying that it might disappear, you know, it might not last? Well, you know, the Chinese theater is a good uh, marketing uh, marketing element, let's call it, right? Because yeah. all of the stars go to the Chinese theater, you know. But I think it is going to change eventually because of... Uh, Trump? Well, I th <laughs> let's say more because of political correctness. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, you know, Trump and political correctness are very... Uh, don't worry, we are, we are not in U.S. In Poland, the guns are not allowed, so we are relatively safe. We are, we are. Well, talking about depends guns. on who's watching, right? Yes. Did you ever feel threatened in U.S.? Like, because, see, uh, you were born in Sweden, yes. which is relatively safe. It was, yes. Yes. When I was born. Yeah, was. When I lived there in the 90s. It was, yes. Yes. Uh, then you were raised in Poland, so yeah. technically no guns. Yeah, guns were not accessible as easily as they were when I moved to the States. Right. And then when you moved to the States, mm -hmm. there were guns. Yes. Did you feel threatened? <laughs> I was never threatened with a gun, Because I already a good had thing. a gun. Had but one of your own? Uh, you have a gun? You mean uh, a gun and a gun? I <laughs> see, that's I, a, see, that's a good timing <laughs> of a joke, <laughs> I guess. But um, yes, I do. I've never felt threatened uh, in in the states. Uh, I have felt that certain individuals may be a little bit unhinged, and they have a very thick jacket, so you don't know what's hiding under that thick jacket. Mm -hmm. um, I have fired weapons uh, both in Poland at a uh, at a shooting range and in the states at a shooting range, and. Uh, in Poland, the, 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 the rules of handling a weapon are much stricter when it comes to fi uh, when it comes to a firing range. In the States, it's like, here's a gun, go shoot. 
-hmm. While in Poland, it's like, okay, we got to go with Here's you. Here's the camera, go shoot. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> something, something along those lines, but, you know, just a lot more stricter. But, yeah, I never felt threatened. I never had an altercation with anyone um, that I can say. Yeah. Um, on camera. On camera. But, uh, no, it's, it's, I feel that, you know, all of the things that we live through now in Poland and in Europe, they kind of already lived through in the States because all of the new technologies, everything that's new, Uber, Bitcoin, for example, uh, 2009. I remember when there was a cafe who accepted Bitcoin. I can only assume that the owner of that cafe is probably now living in a penthouse somewhere in New York City. I hope if he didn't just if he out. didn't just sell it, you know, or lose the, lose <laughs> at the a two X instead of yeah. a five hundred X, you know. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it's it's and especially LA, which you know was so close, is so close to San Francisco, which is so close to Silicon Valley, where all of the big big companies, big tech companies start off. Um, it's it's it, it's. I don't remember where I was going. I lost my track. So no problem. Uh, so did I. Yes. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we, could, we, could we went off on a tangent <laughs> and we fell down a deep <laughs> hole. And we don't know where we are. So um, maybe uh, yeah, it was a LA technology and uh, Bitcoin. Was maybe we just yeah, somehow uh, approached the Bitcoin. Right. Well, right. Talking about Bitcoin, it's uh, it's quite expensive. Don't buy it, guys. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. So. Uh, Not financial advice. Remember. Stay safe. Stay broke. Yes. All right. It's not financial advice. Not financial advice at all. For we educational do purposes only. Only and only. Yes. All right. Okay. One more uh, impending question that yeah. I have. Um, since we were talking about celebrities, do you think mm -hmm. stars are born or they're made? Uh, I guess it's the difference between thermodynamics. Between <laughs> nature versus <laughs> nurture, right? Okay. Um, So if you're born in a very rich family and your daddy pays you to go and, you know, make movies and he owns half of Universal Studios, well, then stars are born, right? Um, it's a lot more, I think, admirable by audiences if a star is raised or created because it feels more organic, like the person worked for it, especially in today's age where it's all about, I mean, hard work, but kind of not hard work because you look at people like, I guess Mark Zuckerberg, first one that comes to my brain. He was what, 21 years old when he created Facebook. I think a lot of, but I feel that it's also changing because mm, people are not willing to sacrifice their life fully for a job, right? I feel that that is also changing. So. Maybe we are going that now the pendulum has swung extremely far and I maybe we're just going back to the middle and then within the f next five, ten years, things will be kind of in the middle. People will feel a little bit more balanced, especially with, with the pandemic, which I can only assume destroyed a lot of lives. And I'm not talking deaths, I'm talking about the economic fallout that came from that. Um, so yeah, maybe we are at a point where the pendulum is starting to starting to slowly swing into the middle and people maybe in a year, two, five, ten, will start feeling that, okay, you know, we're somewhere in a balanced state. But then of course you have the big media who will always try to keep you on edge because because it c generates more clicks, right? Click baiting. So, uh, uh, big media also, they, you know, the big media is always targeting people from 18 to 35 yeah they're most like susceptible most susceptible and these are the people who have the most pressure of being the best among their peers attract yeah. you know getting into the best relationship getting into the best school getting the best job looking the best the hairs the makeup the skincare yeah. everything and so this is a very susceptible part of uh, you know the society where capitalists have their have their claws deep into this age although yeah. there was a study where uh, it was searched that the people from 25 to 30 mm -hmm. are the most stressed people and I think nowadays that, yeah yeah I nowadays agree. it's like uh, the highest stress period I mean uh, that they go through and uh, did you have similar experiences with your life uh, or what was your most stressful period if you would like to share of course 
How did you get out of it? <sighs> the most stressful period, I think, was exactly within that time, 25 to 30, because, well, uh, see, I'm a little bit of a different case because I knew since I was seven years old, eight years old, something like that, that it would be film. It was always, at first it was storytelling. I remember that I would bring my friends in mm -hmm. and I would open a book and just read out loud and try to tell a story, you know, accent on the dialogue. Oh, here's the little, you know, we would read uh, Red Riding Hood, some kids stories, right? But I would read them and I would portray the characters, right? And um, I always knew what I wanted to do in my life. I always knew that it was it had to do with film, it had to do with the camera, um, and eventually it had to do with storytelling. I mean, sorry, it was first storytelling, and then the best way to tell stories was writing them and then filming them, showing them visually. Um, I think that that is what allowed me to focus myself more. Um, I know that a lot of people, and some people die, never knowing exactly what they want in life, what they feel they need to do, yeah. need to accomplish and mm. I understand very well that this is the majority of the majority that people just don't know what they want from life what they want to do they haven't discovered that I don't like this word passion but it is it is the passion uh, of the purpose I think purpose is a better better uh, better word um, the purpose of their own life my purpose I feel is film and I also live by, I don't really know what the next day will bring. I like to plan. I have pretty much until I started running the studio, my life was a freelancer. I would work a little here. I would work a little here. I would find jobs on Facebook. I would get jobs from previous jobs. I was very much a, a let's call it, well, freelancer, right? But this also com comes from my childhood. Uh, if I remember right, First I lived in Sweden, then I lived in Poland, then I lived in the States, now I live in Poland again. And in between those times, I would move. I, I've moved maybe 20, 25 times in my life. And I've always been a journeyman, let's call it. Okay. Um, a person who doesn't really s sit too much in one spot and who Settles. likes to be ch settling, yeah. Um, although it is changing now because I just don't have the energy. I know I'm 33. I don't, I don't, I know I'm not that old, but I feel older. I feel like I've really lived through life. I have visited many countries in my life. I have um, learned a lot from many different people. I've met a lot of people um, f professionally and not professionally. Um, I think traveling is definitely fun to do, but there needs to be a purpose because if you just travel to sit in the hotel for a week, then it's kind of pointless, right? Yeah. Always when you, t always when I would travel, uh, I would always go out into the city, go and find the dirtiest streets, the the back alleys that no tourists go to. Of course, I would visit the tourist areas just to see what it is. But I remember I went to China uh, with a friend like eight years ago, seven years ago, something like that. We went to Chengdu. And I remember, you know, we had like we had to go see the pandas because you know I can't go to China or the and place where they have pandas, pandas and not yeah. see pandas, right? Uh, we would also see some others of the tourist landmarks. But then one day I'm like, you know, let's go off the beaten trail. Let's go into the forest. Let's go in between the buildings, and see the real life. See the the, the, the how people really live. The essence and of it. The core. Was that the essence? Yes, exactly, exactly. Not, not the, uh, not the uh, like. If you go to LA, then of course there's Hollywood Boulevard, which is you know the stars and everything. But then there's other streets. There's yeah. the streets that really show the underground, the this other side of LA. Uh, the drug epidemic, the homelessness. Well, yes, of course. But you also see like little Armenian shops where you can go in and you can get yourself a really nice. Uh, Really nice sandwich, a really nice sandwich that's made by this old babushka in, yeah. in Romania, and it tastes really good. But you know, this you will never find this in a tourist. The tourist. Exactly. Thing. This is only the stuff that you find right. by going off the beaten trail, and this is also uh, this is also something that I like because it it creates opportunities to find out something that wasn't that that you didn't know about and learn something new.
Right. Um, this, the, the one more thing. I know this might be a little. No, no, no. Just uh, not bad, Keep on going. But in terms of uh, in terms of my visit to China, I remember very well one thing that frightened the hell out of me was uh, me and my friend. We uh, we traveled to this to this. Um, um, Oh my God! To this this uh, natural park, it was huge. But in the evening, when we arrived, we went out into the into the street to go get some food. And I remember we're walking down the street. It rained the day before, so there were puddles everywhere. I remember uh, very well how a Chinese cook walks out of the restaurant with a fish, and he puts the fish in the puddle on the street. He washes the fish in the puddle, <laughs> then goes back in the, <laughs> in the restaurant. I'm like, we're not going in there. Oh wow! And but this is also this is this is the thing that you will never see at tourist attractions uh, because everything on perfect. tourist areas, are, it has to be perfect. And these little stories are what kind of. Well, they teach you about this balance. Exactly. Would it's, you want to go to a restaurant like this or would you do something like this? It kind of, I, I guess, maybe I have a nature of retrospection or, or in, sorry, introspection um, to, to, to kind of see what I would do in this. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, I think the more you put yourself in danger, but not danger, not lethal danger, just outside of your comfort zone, the more you learn who you are the more you understand of, okay, you know, I put myself in a situation that is completely out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I feel I handled it fairly well or I completely failed, but you learned something because you did something that you wouldn't normally do, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, it takes, it, takes, it, it takes a toll on you because if it takes you, if you go out into your comfort zone, to a certain ex to a certain extent, you have to believe that you can handle yourself in deep waters, right outside mm -hmm. of that comfort zone. Right. So yeah, it's, I guess I guess uh, believing in yourself is 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 important. But stepping um, out of the comfort zone. I think so. Important. I think yeah. it's I think it's important. And going back to the whole twenty five and thirty being stressed, I feel that. Uh, social media definitely has an has an, a huge impact on those on those young people that you know how many how many stories of failure have you heard versus how many stories of success have you heard I mean you constantly hear especially with TikTok about children millionaires who you know made one trade on Bitcoin or 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 an NFT or whatever right and suddenly you're like, oh my God, I gotta buy it, right? Yeah. And then you're one of the 99 who's not successful because unfortunately, but TikTok stories are one in a million. You, yeah, you don't hear the dark side. You of never hear the dark side. And I feel that this is, this is what is lacking is that we kind of put ourselves in this bubble comparing of comfort. Your, yeah, comparing your ordinary day with somebody else's life's highlight is again, it's a work of a s foolish person. You know, it's not very rational. Yeah. And that's why most of the people on my Instagram, they are muted, their stories. Well, I just go to there and I don't even see their stories because well, you can only do a comparison when you have a point of reference. Yes. And uh, people on social media, they're pointing out the best of their best of their lives. Of course. The uh, older you get, you realize that, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a highlight. Yeah. Um, no need to no need to compare just live your own life and and i think there is uh, definitely that aspect to it uh, are you on any social medias i'm on facebook which i rarely ever post anything on i'm on instagram which i haven't used in two years i have a youtube channel that i have posted nothing on so <laughs> i just kind of i tried tiktok yeah but i realized after a week that this is so addicting and you would just scroll and scroll mm -hmm. and scroll, and suddenly, oh, oh damn it! It's, it's three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> no. What's done. Oh God, yeah. Finished. Finished. Yeah. So I quickly uninstalled it. Uh, but, but you know, Facebook has the same thing, thing with the videos. I haven't heard. I haven't met one person who was using TikTok. Yeah. And either they were like, they had a lot of free time on their hands, and yeah. then they didn't. Yeah. And everybody has the same complaint that it is super addictive. You yeah. just scroll, scroll, and. Just get off it. Just yeah. uninstall the app and be strong okay. for a week, and then you'll forget about it. It's like I mean, it's like saying that you know, get off it. It's like if you're depressed, just stop being depressed. No, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Comparatively, not, yeah, of course, it's not the same. I mean, you know, being on TikTok, th yeah, I think that you need to understand. You you have to look into yourself and and try to understand 
why are you on TikTok? What are you mm-hmm. looking for on TikTok? What is it that you are looking for that you can't find in the real world, outside? If, if there's something, I guess it's excitement. That would be the one thing that I, that I can think of. But then go join a boxing club. Go join a dance studio. Go join. Uh, go on a walk with your dog. Yes, uh, but but Daniel, there is the thing. What are people looking on TikTok? It's necessarily not the content. Actually, it's novelty. And when you okay. go to the boxing, you don't find novelty. You just uh, you just find a bag and gloves and something to punch on. True. So this this feeling of novelty. But you find a com- camaraderie. Camaraderie, Com- you know what I mean. The, the camaraderie. <laughs> we both are equally. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Camara- no, it's yeah, not yeah. partnership because that's it's a different thing. Something called com- f- uh, yeah. camaraderie. You camaraderie, find yes. camaraderie. You find this. Let's call it in layman's terms, broness. Yes. With other bros. Yeah. And then you find a place where you might want to belong yes. for a year, for two, or sense of for belonging. a long time. Sense of belonging. That right. satisfies your social aspect of of your life. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. That is true. Very thing about it's it's S- social aspect important. is very connected to your health. Exactly, it, your mental health, your yes. even your physical health. Yes. Like let's let's go back like even two hundred years ago. No, mm-hmm. we don't even have to go that back. Fifty years ago, yeah, when there were no phones and everything, you had no choice except to let's go back to the time. I mean, where I remember when I didn't have a phone. Exactly. And no you wanted to meet with someone, you don't yeah, text. You go to their house, you bang on the door, their mom opens and you're like, can, can Adam come out and play? Yeah. No, he's grounded. I'm like, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then he comes out, you know? <laughs> and then you go out and then and, and you do some s- s- stuff in, uh, yeah, in the forest. You throw uh, t- uh, pine cones at each other. Yes, I remember when, when we would like, the stick would be a sword. Right, mm-hmm. and we would beat each other up. Then moms would be like, "What have you done?" Like yeah, we had yeah. fun. We were just kids climbing trees, the guys throwing rocks like at each other. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, no one cares yeah. because you're a kid. You grow up, and you know, of course, you get hit in the. I have a few battle scars from my <laughs> stick hitting, <laughs> stick hitting yeah. times. The chronicles of sticks. Yes, yeah. but still, you know, it's it, it was, was fun. fun. It exactly. Was fun. Exactly, and now fun. I, you know, I don't. I don't know what teenagers do for the fun. The things which are left for fun is the world has become way more isolated. Even, and I'm, I'm more concerned about the people who are young, right? Yeah. They are growing in this, uh, this, this, this society where this loneliness is their new norm. This is yeah. something new for us, like you know, being isolated on the phone and everything. Yes, yes. The only way you connect is through digital media, and then. Yeah. I don't think it will be ever be super satisfying or it will it can it can help the more connected you feel on social media is the less connected you actually are with that person. Yeah. And calling has become so intimidating because I see the <laughs> memes around <laughs> it, you know, then you have to call a person. Don't call me, just oh, text just me. Just text me like uh, okay. Since but when calling <laughs> has become, you know, like uh, and it's and it's true. Uh, it, a lot of people, when there's an unknown number calling, ooh, then it's a big goddamn heart know, attack. What, what <laughs> oh my god, who's calling me? <laughs> and Who I wants my money? Who I wants I to th- kill me? Who, you yeah. know? And people used to be excited about getting a no no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who would my <coughs> exactly? So. Most of the time, it's just marketers trying to sell you photovoltaica. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The point is, you know, uh, you answer and. Um, I remember, I remember I watched a TED Talk. I don't know why this comes in, but I guess it's, it's about scamming. I remember I watched a TED Talk. If you haven't watched it, I don't remember what it was called, but it was about a, a guy who responded to the Nigerian prince scam. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The one that writes that, hi, I'm a Nigerian prince. I have a million tons of gold. <laughs> I need you to send me $50 <laughs> so that I can send you that money. Absurd, right? But he decided That's to legit. respond. And, and there are people who believe so that. Fucking, and so honestly, funny. Daniel, I believe those people should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if should If you really oh. believe that a Nigerian prince is writing to you, <laughs> well, to your email. <laughs> yes. For $50. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you deserve to be scammed. Yeah. <laughs> there was this. Ma- <laughs> oh, my goodness. There was this uh, screenshot of some meme that was like about Michael Jackson. Hey, I'm Michael Jackson. Yes, yes, <laughs> I'm yes. Not, I'm, I'm, not not dead. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not dead. So <laughs> I need help getting from LA to New York. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for the train, yeah, but I don't yeah, have the money the for the ticket. Yeah. And, the, uh, and in the end, he just all said, "He he." <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's still me, just to make it more believable. Oh Honestly, yeah, the, the, I, oh, okay, it, it might have been. Might he. have been. You know. 
Well, they say you just Tupac, don't know. They say what? Tupac is still alive on an island somewhere, you know, with Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson. But yeah, we'll never know the truth. Heaven That's Island. Above our pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> above our earth and above our pay grade. Yes, exactly. Wow. But yeah, this is this is true. It's. Um, I think th the topic was, I guess, human nature. Uh, that's kind of where this discussion is kind of going, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we started about, <laughs> about filmmaking, but it's um, the ocean we haven't explored yet. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that we will. I mean, uh, brands have definitely explored it. Oh yeah, because a part of it. and they're exploiting uh, it. They're explore. They've explored enough to be able to exploit it, yeah. and I feel that as a good start. Uh, this is something that I never really understood. I mean, I understand it because I mean, it's like teaching you that you have freedom versus teaching you no, you don't have freedom. You have to get a job, get a wife, and blah. Yeah. Um, that definitely in school, I would say starting middle school, there should be a class teaching you about the different marketing tactics that brand use to uh, deceive you into buying their product. I think it would be a just very, make, like, like the, the just to the make you immune, not immune, but to tactics? make you aware, to make oh, you yes. understand aware that and then immune to like yeah, these exactly because tactics. the more you understand, right, the smarter you hopefully are, right. The more you <laughs> that would be that would be a case because I I might I might differ on this opinion even mm -hmm. when you know, yes, it will definitely help you to identify this brand is trying to sell me. Yes, but hey, it would still be. Like for example, there is nine ninety nine, and yeah. there is ten dollars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nine ninety nine <laughs> sounds better. <laughs> even it is better. Ten doesn't. And and but most the, likely, but the fact that you know it, or better yet, we just had Black Friday. What like a three weeks, four weeks ago, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. The fact that it says Black Friday does not mean that the prices are actually fifty percent cheaper, right? It's it's a complete lie most of the time 80 to 90 percent of the time it's not and they've mm -hmm. plenty of videos have shown uh, where there was a tag that said ten dollars for Black Friday yeah and then they, they removed the tag oh it's ten dollars <laughs> it's still ten dollars without ten exactly so yeah I think that would be I think that would be something to definitely educate yourself on yeah but, on, uh, on explore uh, educate you know don't pretend like you don't care because. It's not going, going to going you circle back meaningful. to what you said about the being cool thing. I mean, great. Maybe some people will care for half a year to yeah. a year, but then, then so what? What kind of relationships have you developed with the people? They're fake. They're based on nothing. It's much better to be hated for who you are than to be loved for who you are not. That's my opinion. It's better to have one or two real true friends that accept you for who you are and and that you actually have a good talk with than to be, you know, Facebook rich with a thousand or totally ten thousand agree. friends. Totally agree. I, I have no objection in that. But and I think and it's it's also it's just the older you become. Like exactly. people people don't people might know it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the sixteen year old somewhere he yeah. knows exactly what it means that it's better to have close friends. Yep. But people don't learn with information they learn with experiences and when yep. they will just go through a couple of setbacks hardbacks yep. which is it's not the question of if it will come it will the question of when it comes and yeah. it will come yeah nobody is immune to bad experiences in life no, heartbreaks betrayals no, no. losses Cheats, scams it, it's you have to live through it exactly it makes you it will make you who you are exactly but they can always be aware of Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good to be aware. And Michael <laughs> Jackson is gone, guys. <laughs> yes. It it Tupac is not riding you. Yeah. <laughs> for a plane ticket <laughs> for $50. <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, the scams are also becoming... I Actually, today I received an, a text message that said, uh, the delivery of your package is not possible because you didn't write in a uh, an address. Click on the link. Yeah. And this is, you know, this is kind of, if you have packages coming your way, you might believe it. I immediately wrote to my fiance because she's expecting a package. I'm like, don't click on this. This is fake. I actually did. You clicked on it. <laughs> you okay. uh, the prince we didn't okay, get so me. Okay, so here we go. Mm -hmm. You clicked on something. You went down a dark path, right? Yes. You clicked on something. But I realized it immediately. What did you learn? Now we're to now we're, this is the part where the moderator the exactly. <laughs> becomes the question. What did I learn, guys? Like, doesn't matter how smart you is, are, 
Oh, I just went to well, USA. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can still fall prey to all these things, and you just got to be a bit more careful about that, you know? Yeah. I don't know what's my two cents, no matter what kind of answer you What did you, you learn? What happened when you clicked on the link? I, d I didn't stick around to find out because I okay. I just I just found out. Yep, that's not that's not it. Okay, okay. Because so I'm, I'm always yes. I I just got off. Good. I just got off because I was thinking about uh, because I'm a foreigner here and yeah. you never know what kind of policies or what package maybe True. the government might be sending me or like a postal code. True. And that's the only reason why I clicked on it. But again, if you are not expecting a package. And you know this is the kind of scam. Even that if you are, just find out through the 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 way. Go onto the type in the package and see what the status that's is. That's a like. lot of work. Uh, ah, mm. well, <laughs> well, is this another? I mean, look, uh, <laughs> going once again back to produ film production. Uh, I've worked twenty-hour days, right? I assume uh, you haven't worked on film production, but I assume you understand that you know. I in do. film production, it, it's, it hurts. It hurts when you work it's, 20 it's, hours. It's very hard. No, I was and always wondering, because I've been on some shootings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some advertisements the and stuff like that. Shootings? Like, uh, shooting. <laughs> <laughs> shootings. Uh, yes. I love my Middle production East. Production shootings. Days in yes. the Middle East, they were nice. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, so the shootings were, uh, and the cameramen were like some of those people were holding uh, the mic over your yes. head. Boom operators. Jesus Christ. I'm not even yeah. Christian, but I'm no, still imagine saying that for yeah. 12, 12 hours is a standard. Yes. There is a standard of 12 hours. In film industry, eight hours is not the standard. That is the standard in corporate, in small SNMs, large uh, and big companies. But film can come It's slavery. It's to put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> slavery. You get paid for it, right? It's just the question. Yeah, it's just the only difference, guys. It's, it's always like it's always a question of how hard. much you value your time, which I mm -hmm. think is I don't know if you want to get into this topic of valuing your time and working twelve hour days, but. Yeah, I, I I understand. Do you think the wage matches the amount of work that the filmmaking industry people get? Because I always have a doubt on that. <coughs> All right, a guy is holding a microphone for like 12 hours. It's ridiculously high. He's also listening to uh, the director's, you know, yeah. uh, remarks. And, you know, like he might be got yelled upon. So is he really getting paid that much is it getting paid per hour of course it depends on the contracts but to do you honest, think they are underpaid or i think that i think that depends on how much you feel you're worth there are people who work for 200 what a day you know doing a certain job or a certain service and they feel that that is what they're worth but there are people who get paid uh, a thousands what an hour who feel that that is what they're worth right i think it's I think it's also something that you grow up with experience. Um, it also depends on uh, the type of upbringing that you have, because if your parents teach you value your time and, and um, value the money that your time is worth, right, then you already have an, an, an uh, not better, but a different upbringing than someone who uh, has parents who doesn't have that mm -hmm. who didn't teach them that, that you should value your time but instead teaching you that you need to get a job you need to get a minimum paid job and have your what is it now like 23 zloty per hour whatever it is the minimum wage and that's pretty much where you'll be right and there's a lot of people who are like that it's it's not a matter of who is better and who is worse i think it's a matter of what you feel you're worth mm -hmm. right there are people who feel that they're worth uh, 500 zloty a day and there's people who feel they're worth 5,000 zloty a day, right? It also depends on the actual market. On, well, the skills are one thing, but the actual market, right? Because, of course, you can feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm worth 10,000 zloty an hour, right? But the question is, who's going to pay you for <laughs> exactly. that? So yeah. it's, it's, it's always, once again, a balance between what you feel you're worth versus what someone is willing to pay you for that experience the skills to do whatever it is that he would want you to do for those x amount of thousands or exactly, millions exactly <laughs> I mean, it's just the thing it's like it is not just about the feeling you gotta have the skills yes you, you, exactly i've met a lot of experts who are like <laughs> i am worth this much but when i see <laughs> but, them but nobody work, pays I'm like, them nobody pays uh, them to, to be that uh, Expert, they do. Right. They probably they are not looking for that kind of expertise, right? Yes, yes. And it's, wow, it's, you got to be careful about the experts. Yeah, <laughs> the experts Daniel, might not be experts. Yeah. Mm, so there are a lot of people who would like to go in content creation, 
America okay. is full of influencers. Yeah. So uh, this is this is the question strictly for the people who would like to show themselves more in in front of the eyes. Maybe they want to share the values. Maybe they want to show their workouts. Maybe they are good at pianos. Whatever they are. What are some some of the tips that students or younger generations can use to not appear silly in front of camera? I mean, I'm not really putting it right, but to to not waste their time and effort, but still get the most uh, when you are in front of the camera. What are the tips that you could give them uh, to enhance? Because you have been in behind camera for yeah, so yeah, many yeah. years. It's your passion. You love it. So what are some tips for those people to be less camera shy, more effective, mm -hmm. and save their time, resources, energy to, to just... We're talking technical stuff, yeah? Because the first thing I would say, if you want to become a big influencer, I guess, I don't know, find a deal brand. But when it comes Bo to the technical stuff... Both of them, actually. Okay. Technical, uh, psychological, because you can only get, just a second, uh, we could, you could only get nice brand deals when you're famous. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, how to be very famous, like you have to have your technical aspect done, your confidence in the right place. And that's also reverse back to my question of are stars born or made? Because some people, doesn't matter what they try, let's be real, really real here. Mm -hmm. you could, if you're posting for last three years, one video a week, and you still have 2,500 subscribers on YouTube, my friend, it's probably not going to work out for you because there is a limit to how it, that's, it's really important to know when to give up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great to not give up at all. But it's important to know when to give up. And so well, what I is it? I wouldn't say give up. I would say move on. Because if you give That's up, a better word. if you give up, I mean, this is my associate. I, it's always what you tell yourself, right? If you yeah. give up, then you might feel like you've lost something. Mm -hmm. But if you move on, then you tried something. You failed, of course, but you That's learned actually, something. That's actually a very good thing that you mentioned. So, so correct. You but, but still, on, yeah. <coughs> um, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of YouTubers or or influencers, let's call them, who have figured out the system. I feel that if you want, I th I, th I guess it it all depends on the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing, right? If you just want to play piano, record yourself and put it online, and you don't really care how many people watch it, then fine, do your thing. Uh, if you want to make it look better, then uh, uh, definitely uh, find out what is the th what is three-point lighting. That's step number one. Um, step number two is um, depth of field and depth of field based is only on the camera that you have and technically the size of the sensor. Um, look at someone who has that spark, that charm that you would want to achieve and analyze it. See where the light is coming from. Uh, see what it is that you like about it. Is it the editing? Analyze it. Just you know, dive deeper into it and try to find out what it is that makes it look good. Um, of course, technical aspects, there is more, but three-point lighting for sure. Field uh, of depth. Uh, what's depth. that? Field of depth. Uh, de depth of field, yeah, depth, depth of, of field. field. Okay. Um, I would start there. Uh, color balance, of course, wh white color balance. Um, and yeah, I mean, the environment that you're showing in the background, this is also important, right? Uh, your face, how close, how far is it White to White color camera? balance in the camera, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's nothing, uh, nothing among. <laughs> <laughs> White color balance <laughs> is how the camera perceives the color white depending on the light that is shined upon a white surface. Depending on the light, not the, not the rays. No, <laughs> it has nothing to do with rays. So uh, simple, white balance. This looks white because the camera is set to 5080 Kelvins, which is what the lights are shining at the white. So yeah. just- Kelvins is like the if measure, you measure find of out, light? Uh, yes, the color of the color of white light, because there's different. Uh, there's a spectrum. there's a spectrum of the of of Kelvin's, which is from warm to uh, cold. Okay, okay, I see. And that's pretty much it. If you go into a shop where you buy light bulbs, the the Kelvin's will be like three thousand two hundred or four thousand six hundred, five thousand or six thousand Kelvin's, and but the you higher you go, the colder the light gets. Okay, uh, uh, so you should get ideally five thousand two hundred. It does. It, it's not. It's, there's no such thing as ideal. Like this light, for example, is at around 3,200, uh, but it works nice because it adds a little bit of a uh, color contrast, okay. warmth, exactly, uh, to the lights that are at around 5,000. 
Okay, okay. So I never really thought about this way. I've been in the studio for a while now. Yes, but, but yeah, it's these tiny details. It's it is, and if you're interested, more than welcome to come. I'll show you what depth of field is, what three point lighting is. But first, do your own research. This is yes. very important because Don't if come you come to, to me, uh, yes, right. Show yeah. me that you're interested. You know, yeah. Because if you just come teach me and be like, well, you know, mm -hmm. start with teaching yourself. Yes. This is the very important. Um, Bring some proof of work. <laughs> yes, <and> exactly. <laughs> the, tell me what a T stop is versus an F stop. If yes. you know, see, there we there, go. There will be an interview on the <coughs> floor where yes, he yes, will be yes. asking T -stop, you these questions. T stop, F stop, go. Yeah, exactly. The qualifying exam. Once you do it, what's the difference between stop. super thirty-five millimeter versus thirty-five millimeter? Mm -hmm. What's a crop factor? There's a lot of different things, but yeah. Um, yes. And the other side, I mean, if you're just looking. I'm not an expert. I don't do influencer stuff. Uh, but you make influencer. I do content that is based on uh, marketing. I don't. I think that. I guess Mr. Beast is a very interesting person or YouTube character, influencer person, influencer character, uh, to analyze of how he cracked the algorithm. Yes. Because from my understanding, YouTube, Facebook, all of these, they're all based on algorithms. It doesn't matter what you're putting out there. Uh, what matters is how you put it into the algorithm and how you use that to your own advantage. You could be, you know, it could be a mukbang video where you're just eating pasta, right? Yes. But if you know how to turn this around, then that's the story. Exactly. Uh, how you drive engagement, how many people are, people are clicking on your video, yeah. what is the watch timing? And that that's has nothing to do exactly. with the content itself. I think that's so the there's different types <coughs> of people. Yeah. That's the holy grail of it. Yeah. Uh, meaning, if you are, uh, doesn't matter how, what's your quality, what's your content. It just doesn't matter. If you cannot get past the algorithm, there is no way in But that doesn't mean you have failed, right? Because if yeah. you feel satisfied with 1,000 subscribers, the people that watch you play piano, for example, yeah. right? for, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. I would definitely start, if you're doing any musical stuff, also invest in a better microphone, find out a better way to record the sound, because just recording it on your phone, you know, it echoes, yeah. the sound doesn't, it doesn't sound pure, it doesn't sound nice. Mm -hmm. There are cheap ways, uh, cheap what equipment that you can use to record the sound better. Exactly. What would be? Do you have any microphone on the top of your head that you might recommend? I don't want to. Wanna, I don't want to <laughs> put brands into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's Sennheisers. There's Ceramonic. There's Shure. There's a lot of different microphones that are that are cheap. Rode mm -hmm. mic. Uh, but but a beginner friendly. You know that's not. Ro Rode Rode mic. I think it's called Video Two or something like that. I think okay. it's a good start. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Video Two. Uh, yeah. We will mention the link. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy our merchandise uh, down uh, here. <laughs> affiliated link with uh, yeah. every every dollar you spend goes to the charity owned by Daniel here for his <laughs> yes. personal benefit. This yeah, is, this uh, fifty is percent goes to my pocket, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is good. And finally, uh, it was uh, it was amazing to talk to you, Daniel. I would like to conclude with something. And vice versa. Ah, thank you. Uh, I would like to conclude with uh, what brings what part of this job or I would say life path fulfills you the most and what practical advice would you like to offer to the students or younger generations or even older generations that they should uh, they should uh, embody in themselves to have a better experience navigating through ups and downs of life the I first thing that comes to mind about what really satisfies me and I understood this the first time my movie was being screened mm -hmm. is I watched people's emotions rise and fall and change as they were watching my movie and that felt amazing that really really felt great um, to see that I don't know if you can see that through social media I don't think you can all you can see is kind of likes and dislikes and the thumbs up or thumbs down but it felt really good to see your work indirectly appreciated through the fact that you know people watch your movie and they really liked it and complimenting i feel that reversing the saying an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind if everybody cared about others more than themselves then eventually that care will come around because yes. you care for someone someone cares for them cares for them cares for them cares for them then they eventually someone will come and care for you so 
reversing that an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind into a care for a care comes care back, <laughs> something like that. I'll just get it coated um, and hang it on my wall. It's yes. of course it's of course it's it's maybe naive thinking, but I think I don't think it, it is naive. I think it's a it's a very very genuine opinion. I think uh, opinion, you, know, you know it's it's, it's a very long shot, but that's the point. Exactly, that's the point uh, that it is. An long eye for an eye is very individualistic, uh, you know, thing. You could it's easy to take revenge on someone. Uh, yes, but, but caring and not expecting anything back is one it's thing. That's hard. one thing also that also came into my mind. Um, read about what are the biggest regrets of people on their deathbed. I know it sounds scary. It sounds oh my god, death. No, I'm only twelve or uh, mm -hmm. I'm only twenty. Uh, it's it's I don't have to think about death. I think if you start realizing that you will die i know this goes very deep right now uh, one day then you will understand that you have a limited amount of time and then the question is what would you want to well, how would you want to feel and what kind of memories would you want to come back to the day before you die exactly it's very very it's tough to consider that but but it's a good practice it's a very stoic yeah. it's a very good practice yes to get through good times and to get through bad times, yes. uh, irrespective of that, the, the realization that you are going to die one day, it makes, it doesn't, it might sound again horrible. It but will at the beginning, yes, but it, it will, will eventually only, fade and you will start to understand that. It will only make your life better because you will start to appreciate the limited amount of time that you have on yes. this earth and you will be more kind to yourself, to others. Yeah. And everybody failures that comes will in not contact. be failures anymore. Exactly. Failures will turn into learning opportunities. It Successes is. will be fantastic when they're shared with the people who worked with you to get to that success. Of course, keeping your friends close. Daniel, you know, we should be philosophers. Well, no one likes philosophers. That's right. <laughs> because but that's the exact reason why we should be. <laughs> exactly. so we should be because it's great, but we should be because no one likes them. Exactly. So well, yeah. that was uh, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing uh, such valuable experiences. You know, I would I would love to return with you on on because maybe we just I felt like we just stressed the surface of your life. There is a lot more uh, that we could talk about on 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 a different podcast sure. and uh, eventually in, in, in a couple months when we grow up more from, from our current environment, mm -hmm. we could have one more conversation like that. Sounds good. Let's and see how this one goes. Yeah, I, let's see <laughs> how it, many. Uh, if it has a hundred <laughs> views, then, like, maybe not. Based on the number of dislikes, we will be, we yeah. will be right back. <laughs> Subscribe and like. Yeah. Awesome. Thank All you right. very much. Depends Thank you. you. It, it was really it was, was lovely talking to you. Guys, yes. I will be back with another episode. If you enjoyed it, you know, uh, I wouldn't say the cliche about hitting the subscribe button, but just let me know in the comments what would you like to see next, and I will try to do my best. Thank you so much, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.